I like playing around with my makeup, but generally this is the type of look I go for, subtle and soft. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie, I'm 51 years old. I'm a professional makeup artist, a licensed hairstylist, and I talk about all things beauty related. Um, sometimes a little fashion too, but I'm just learning about that. Anyway, today's focus is gonna be about the Sephora sale coming up soon. I wanted to go through my top picks, um, which is hard to narrow down actually, because I try so many things. I thought this might be helpful for you to help you decide if you need anything for the Sephora sale. And for reference, I am a dry skin, obviously mature skin. So let's get going. Let me put my hair up so I can actually do a proper job. It's a beautiful look, gorgeous. <laughs> I'm gonna go in order of application just to keep it straight for me and for you. Hopefully this will make it easier for you. So the first thing I'm gonna apply is Polish Choice 20% Niacinamide Treatment. Niacinamide is a type of B3. It can help with inflammatory issues. It can help reduce pore size. It can help with acne and reduce redness. I'll just rub it in my hands like this and just press it into my skin. And I go all the way down my neck and my decollete. It's really important to not forget your neck and your decollete. That is what everybody sees. And it's what has seen the sun the most. Then I keep it pretty basic. This is the Inky List Hyaluronic Acid. This costs $9 Canadian. I'm not sure what it costs in the US. It's a little tiny bottle, but you don't need very much. It's really easy to travel with. And again, I'll just rub it in between my fingers. I like it because it's a nice light texture. Sometimes hyaluronic acid can be kind of slimy feeling, and I don't like that feeling. One brand in particular that I find that with and I can't remember which one it is. Hyaluronic acid, if you don't know, is a molecule that holds a thousand times its weight in water. So it will just trap that moisture into your skin and it's an instant plumper. I have two favorite moisturizers that I use under makeup. One is the Bobbi Brown Vitamin and Rich Face Base and the other one is Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Cream. There's something about them that makes my foundation look so good and I never have problems with pilling or it wearing off too soon. They're just perfect for underneath makeup. They're like a primer and a moisturizer in one. I think today I'm gonna to use the Charlotte Tilbury. A little bit goes a long way. I love the smell of it too, but I love the Vitamin and Rich Face Base as well. I don't know why. Just sometimes I'd switch it up because of the mood that I'm in. I don't use an eye cream specifically during the day because I don't want my concealer to move around, but that's what works for me. You have to do what works for you. Just by pressing whatever's left on my fingers up underneath my eye does it enough for me. I think it would be very different if you struggled with dry under eyes, especially flaking, but for me, I don't. I have in the past, but I've been able to maintain it really well, so that's what I do. Where I get really dry is around my mouth. I don't know what it is, but if a foundation doesn't work for me, if it's too drying, this is where I'll feel it. A lot of people get dry on the cheeks, not me. It's all around my mouth. And if there's anything left, I'll put it on my hands. Now for my sunscreen, I actually have two. <laughs> this one is the Unseen Sunscreen by Supergoop, and this is the Glow Screen. I don't want glow all over my face. I have, you know, more texture in my cheeks, and I find if I have too much glow around this area, it can really accentuate that. So I know this seems extra, and if you like a glow all over your face, then go for it. I will use the Glow Screen right around here, you see? maybe right around here where I don't mind, and just down my nose. And I'll use the glow screen on my decollete. I like the glow on my chest. If I had to run out of the house like this, my skin looks so fresh and glowing. And that's the whole point, right? You wanna have good, healthy skin. And then when you put foundation on, maybe you don't even need foundation or you just need a little bit because your skin is in such good shape. Now I'm gonna use the unseen and all the areas that I don't want shine. So right in here and just everywhere. <laughs> I'll put it on my ears. I often start with a color corrector first. This is the Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick in Bisque. I will just put that right in here, right where I'm dark. I can sometimes get away with this on its own. If you find that your concealer is looking gray and it's just not covering the darkness, try a color corrector. I'm gonna let that sit and then in the end, if I need concealer, I will use it. Sometimes I don't, but I'll probably show you one today because I wanna show you my favorite concealers. All right, time for foundation. I have so many. None of this is sponsored, by the way. I'm gonna pull a few out. I obviously only can wear one today, but I wanna show you some of my favorites. And I haven't self-tanned my skin in a while, so a lot of these aren't gonna match me. I'm not really gonna have a choice of what I use. Oh, I know which one I'm gonna use, I think. How do I pick just one? It's impossible. <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six foundations in front of me. Is that it? There might be more. And, and a tinted moisturizer. 
Oh, speaking of this though, I want to prime my skin first. I don't use a lot of primer because I really did that with my skincare. I'm old school. That's what we always used to do back in the day. But I like blurring out my pores. Right in here is where I'm having issues and right in my chin and a little bit in here too. So my favorite go-to primer is the Tarte Timeless Smoothing Primer. Tati Westbrook always talks about this. I don't know. I'm sure you probably see her. Like, look, it's immediate. I don't know if you can see. And I only put that where I need it. It just makes them disappear. And that's it. That's all I do. This thing's gonna last me forever. It'll go bad before I use it all up. I think my all-time favorite foundation of the year, oh, I can't choose. I don't know, are you guys like me where you like to have a different foundation for your mood? And because I self-tan my skin all the time and then I kind of fade in and out, I have so many different colors. So I would say my top rated foundation is the House Labs Triclone Foundation. I love this. It has such a beautiful coverage. I can't wear it today because I don't have my shade, but it has such a beautiful coverage. It feels good. I always get compliments on my skin. I love this. Another one that I just tried this year and I'm not sure why, maybe this is new, but I always heard about the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self-Adjusting Foundation, I think it's called. I never tried that one and I heard so many good things about it, but I went to the Shiseido counter this year. I think it was just a couple months ago, actually. And this is the Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. Oh my God, I love it. And again, I get so many compliments on my skin when I use this. It's a nice, beautiful coverage. All my sunspots disappear, but it doesn't look makeupy or heavy at all. And it doesn't feel heavy. And again, I can't wear this because it doesn't match. Dang. I'm not even sure that I can rank these as number one, two, and three. So don't, don't go by that. The Dior Forever Skin Glow is stunning. I'm going to say the same thing. It's light on my skin. I feel good. It lasts. It doesn't budge. My skin looks like skin and it's radiant. I love it. By the way, I do have shorts up on my channel where I use these products. So maybe I could link them for you. I'll pin a comment at the top of the comment section with all these linked so then you can see them in action. Another favorite is Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. I love this foundation. Maybe that's what I'll use today. I like it so much I have two different shades. So I can definitely make this work if I mix the two together. Yeah, that might be the one. Or there's another Dior foundation that I absolutely love. So if you travel a lot, this would be the foundation for you. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body. It is stunning. You know how much I like this when I have this many? That's a lot. That's partly because I thought I was darker than I was <laughs> and I never returned it. But I use them to mix. So I have 3N, which is too dark. I have 2.5N. Um, which will be too dark for me today. And this is my 1.5 N, so that's probably more what I'm like today. The next one is the Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, and this is by Hourglass. Hourglass is probably one of my favorite lines of all of Sephora. There's just something about that line that is meant for mature skin. It's radiant, glowing, and it never sits on top of the skin, if that makes sense. I even have the Vanish Stick Foundations. I have three of those. So you know I love a foundation when I buy multiples in different colors. These are wonderful to travel with, and they're really good to put in your purse. I'll show you, actually. Probably like a natural now, and you can see that I've got some redness in my chin area. So I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger. You can go directly on your face if you want. And I can just tap that on and all my redness is gone. See, and around my nose where I blow all the time, that's my worst area. You see how easy that is? It's perfect. I think today I'm gonna use the Makeup Forever because it matches me. My husband's in the office back there and I can hear him talking. Yeah, that matches. So I'm gonna go ahead with this one. A little bit goes a long way with this as well. What I find about this foundation is it lasts all day long on my skin anyways. And I think that depends on how you prep your skin as well. I've been talking to you for a while too. So my skincare has had time to sink in. That's really important as well. It leaves a beautiful skin-like finish. It's undetectable. This is where my problem area is. And all of this redness, it's very irritated there. And you see it covered it up without making it look makeup-y. That's really important. That's sometimes hard to do. Next thing I'll do is contour or bronze. I have a couple favorites in this category as well. And again, it depends on my mood. There's no ranking for these products. Um, sometimes I want more of a contour. Sometimes I want more of a bronzing effect. And it also depends on the color that I am at the time, whether I have a self tan or whether I'm my natural pale self, which I have been a lot more lately. I'm trying to embrace it. I actually have a lot. <laughs> so I have Merit Beauty. I love this. This is new to me. 
but the color is so nice for my fair skin. It's creamy, it doesn't lift up my foundation when I blend it in. It's sleek, unique, love it. I've used Rare Beauty for a long time. I should swatch these for you though because they have different tones. So this one is Rare Beauty, again, very creamy. That one's Merit. This one is Westman Atelier. This is new to me as well and I love it. I love the color. So this one has more of a cool tone, which I love. And this one's the mini. They are so great, especially for someone like me who likes to own and try many. Another one that I have is the Makeup by Mario. I've used this on myself and a friend of mine, actually. This one's similar to the Merit Beauty, but you can see how they all have different tones. This one's definitely the cooler of all four of them. And then the last one I have is Tower 28. I love this. It's easy to pack for traveling. It's easy to store as well in your drawer. And I'll just use my finger for this one. And there you go. So all different price points, all very good. Rare Beauty has many shades. So does Makeup by Mario. I think Merit does as well. Oh, there's one more. There's always one more. I love the Soft Sculpt by Makeup by Mario. It is so pretty. Like if you're not sure on what to do, when it comes to contour. This is so easy, you just can't go wrong. It's a much sheer formulation, so there's no way to be heavy handed with this. In fact, I'm gonna show you this one today. If you're a beginner and you're worried about going too heavy, you won't go too heavy with this one. So I'm just gonna dip my brush directly in. And I'm using the top of my ear as my guide and going down. And go slightly above that, you don't wanna go lower. If you go lower, it's okay. Take your foundation brush and just tap it in and blend it out. I also love this because it doesn't lift my foundation. It's such a pain when you buy a product and it lifts your foundation, especially because I've just worked so hard to cover that hyperpigmentation. It's so annoying. I hope you can see that it leaves a dewy finish. If you don't like that, you can powder it down, but I really like it. Youthful skin has glow. Notice how I'm not contouring right in here. As we age, we hollow out here. So if I put the contour there, it's gonna make it sink in even more and I don't want that. I'm gonna contour my nose a little bit. You do not have to do this, but I'm gonna use my Westman Atelier for this, I think. And I'm actually gonna use an eyeshadow brush. I want something nice and small so I can be very detailed. Part of the reason why I switched to the Westman Atelier is this is an area where I don't want anything looking dewy. I want it to look matte. Maybe if I wanna get fancy, I'm gonna contour right under here. Give me a little bit of a pouty look. If you've watched my videos before, you know I always go with Soft Ochre Paint Pot by MAC. I don't know why I would ever change when I like this so much. The Soft Ochre counteracts all the redness in my eye. As I've aged, my eyelids have become more and more see-through. I even have a hyperpigmentation spot right there. And the Soft Ochre just evens everything out so that when I put eyeshadow on, it doesn't have to fight against that other color. Or there's no distraction. Okay, eyeshadows are hard. I do have palettes that I reach for all the time that never fail me. They're not necessarily that new, but they're classic. Easy to use is really important to me, and I have to like the color story. So, so my top favorite eyeshadows at Sephora are the Dior Backstage Shadows. These are stunning. This one's really fun, and this one's more neutral. Well, it's called neutral. There's a base color right in here, so if you don't wanna use the soft ochre, there's one that comes with it. And then you've got these beautiful, subtle, classy shadows. That's the best way I can describe it. So even the shimmers aren't that shimmery. They just add a beautiful glow. The colors of this palette are so flattering. But if you're looking for some fun, the khaki neutrals are stunning. Look at that green. It's so pretty. I will leave video links for you in the comments section so you can see these in action. You can tell I'm a makeup artist, eh? Like I love the clear tops on these because you can see. This palette is by Viseart. It's also a neutrals palette. All mattes, they go on so smooth, buttery. They don't have any fallout. You've got your black, you've got your white and everything in between. Love this, so easy to use. Anastasia Beverly Hills never fails. This is a soft glam palette. If you like the warmer tones, this is perfect for you. Plus you've got a little bit of a neutral color in there as well. Anastasia Beverly Hills, again, this is a sultry palette. This is a well-loved palette. You can tell I like the cool tones better. I'm hitting pan on some of them. This silver never fails. It's so gorgeous. 
This is dirty. I showed this so much when I first got it. This is another palette that would be really good to travel with. And everything is labeled really nice for you. It's got some beautiful shimmer shades if you're interested in that. And you've got a blush and a highlight. And oftentimes I will use the highlight on my eye if I don't wanna go with these colors, which are a little bit more intense. You see how that has a beautiful soft glow. It's more of a glow really than a shimmer, I would say. So it looks really pretty on the eyes. And then this is the blush. So very soft and subtle. There is a light face palette and a darker face palette. So if you watch my videos before, you know I love Bobbi Brown cream shadow sticks. They're long wear cream shadow sticks. They're so easy. Again, really easy to travel with easy to apply. I'm not going to use these today because I have so many videos using them and I can put those in my comment section as well. But you can see when I put that on and then I can just blend it out. You can blend it out with a brush, you can blend it out with your finger and they stay. And the beauty of these is they're multitask. So you can use them as your liner, you can use them as your shadow, as your highlighter, whatever. They're, they're really good. Finally, I'm going to point out Danessa Myrick's Color Fix Mattes. I have it in the chocolate and I have it in the black. These are perfect for liners, or you can put these on first as your base and then add your eyeshadow on top to give it a pop. Let me use one of these today. Enough talking. I'm gonna use the Dior Backstage Neutrals. So I'm gonna go into this color first and put that in the crease. And I am gonna show you really quickly because you've been here long enough. <laughs> When you have the right shadows, it makes your application so much easier. I always kind of flick it out on the outer corner here. With my finger, I'm gonna use the center color and put it in the center. Easy peasy. I'm gonna take the same brush actually and go into the darker color here and pop it in the corner and blend it over that center shade. I'm gonna take this same dark color and use it as my eyeliner. Now you don't have to do that, you can use the lighter shades. This could be more of your night look if you want, but I just wanna keep it simple for you guys today because I have more to talk about. And I'm gonna take this lighter shade here and put it right in the inner corner. Now I'm gonna just turn my brush around and I'm gonna go into this lighter color here and take that underneath my brow bone. It has a touch of shimmer, but not much. I have three different mascaras that are my favorites. I recently tried the Mac Stack mascara and I really like it. I like the waterproof actually better than the other one, although it is hard to get off. You need a good makeup remover to get that off. My favorite mascara of all time is the Tarte Tubing Mascara. I own both. I paid for these. That's how much I like it. This mascara is so good if you want easy removal and if you have sensitive eyes. Same with this one. This is the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara. Unlocked, yeah, Unlocked Instant, Unlocked Instant Extended Mascara. This was my all-time favorite for a long time and I have multiple of those as well. I love all of them, but I'm gonna stick to the one that I use all the time and that is the Tarte Tubing Mascara. First, I'm gonna curl my lashes. This is the Shuruma Lash Curler. Let's discuss brows. This is fairly simple for me. I go to the same ones all the time. Can't find it, but I have been using Benefit Precisely My Brow, I believe it's called. Yeah, in number two. It's not my favorite, but I really like it. I love Anastasia Beverly Hills. I use soft brown. I, I am a natural ginger, so the soft brown is nice for me because it has a bit of warmth, but it's not too red. I love Charlotte Tilbury's Brow Cheat. It's probably my favorite. I just love the weight of it. I love that it's refillable. I don't know if a lot of you know that, but it is. This part pops out and the refill is much less expensive. So you only have that big purchase once. And this just feels so good in the hand. It's like having a really nice pen. So I'm gonna use this one today because it's my favorite. I am in the color, I think soft brown as well. Yeah, I'm in the color soft brown. I'm really liking the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze. I have really stubby brows. So brow mascaras don't really work for me, I find. I need something a little bit heavier that I can kind of get in there to the root of my brow and really work the product in. Where is my brow freeze? I was cleaning and I think I've 
I'm not quite done yet. <laughs> We're getting there, yay. I'm actually not gonna use this today. I really like my eye look the way it is. This is my go-to look. My favorite lip color this year. Oh, I know I have two favorite lip colors. I think it's actually in my purse because this is the one I carry with me all the time. Hold on. I made a video last week showing you my new favorite lipstick. This is the Merit Signature Lipstick, I believe it's called, and this is in Baby. I'm gonna show it to you right now. The other one, actually, I'm gonna show you the my Natasha Denona Dream Lipstick as well. I'll do that one first. This is the one that I was reaching for the most. My lips are so dry, sorry guys. I love this color, it goes with any lip liner that I wear. Let me actually put a darker color on. I'm doing it all backwards. First, I'm gonna line my lips with Soar. I also love Iconic Nude Lip Liner from Charlotte Tilbury. I love Pillow Talk 2 from Charlotte Tilbury. I love Soar, it's an all-time favorite. And there, it looks so pretty. Now I'm gonna show you what Merit looks like. I think I'm gonna use the same lip liner. And that's baby. You can tell I like the nudes with a little bit of pink. I just think this is my lips, but better. It's so pretty. It's really comfortable and it's not long wearing, but it's not so creamy that it just slides off your lips. It's all coming together. Now let's go through some of my favorite concealers. One is the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I love this one because it's kind of self-setting, so I really don't need to set it with powder. I like that because the more layers that I put on my skin, the more makeup-y I look, and if it can just self-set itself, without powder or with very little powder, then that makes me really happy. I would actually use this one today, but the color's not right for my skin. I love the Forever Skin Corrector. I love Dior. Dior never fails me. I know it's bougie, but I've never been unhappy with the Dior product. I also love the Dior Backstage Concealer. I may use this one because it matches me. I love Bobbi Brown's Skin Full Cover Concealer as well. It's one of those self-setting, I think it's a self-setting concealer. I'm not sure that that's what's claimed in there description. I don't find I need a lot of powder with this one either. You know what? I'm going to use this one. This is the Dior Forever Skin Correct. This is in 1.5 and so it should match. So I'm just going to put it right there just in my problem areas. Give myself a little bit of a lift. Maybe a little bit right there just to highlight a little bit and I'm going to just pat it in. Give myself a little bit of a lift. There's so many other concealers I wanna try. Because my makeup is sad a bit, I can see where I need to touch up and it's just a perfect time to do my finishing touches. Now my favorite powders. This is easy for me. For a compact powder, I love the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Finish Powder. I have two colors. One is primarily my color and I have two, depending on how self-tanned I am. I love the Hourglass Veil Setting Powder. This one is so finely milled. It was my favorite of all time and still ranks number two. Two, I wanna say it's number two, because number one on my list is the Laura Mercier Blur Powder. I love this, it's talc free. So is Hourglass though, it's talc free as well. It's light as a feather, my skin loves it, and I just tap it where I need it. I'm never heavy handed with powder. I place that where I really have issues with my makeup staying. I will set my concealer, but again, this is so light, it's invisible and it doesn't make my under eye cakey. I have three brands of blushes that I love. Hourglass never fails me. As you can tell, I love this brand. This one is in Mood Exposure. I use this in so many of my videos. It is foolproof. You can see how it's got a little bit of a swirl through that, so it gives that iridescent glow. It's so gorgeous, and they have many different colors. I love the Dior Pink Blush, and my new favorites are House Labs. I love these. These are the Color Fuse Blushes. I have Pomelo Peach, Hibiscus Haze, and this one is Dragon Fruit, Dragon Fruit Days. But I keep reaching for this one. This is the Pomelo Peach, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like. There's something about this blush that's long wear on me. Blush is something that fades off of me the fastest. That and lipstick, and this stays. If you ever feel like you went heavy handed with blush, don't worry about it because it's the first to fade. But another thing you can do is take your foundation brush and just go around the edges, just to make sure the edges are all blended out. Just softens those. I generally don't use a highlighter, but if I'm gonna use one, it will be the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I feel like I have a lot of Bobbi Brown. I'm sorry, guys. You know when you love a brand and everything just works for you? It's kind of what's happened to me, but I feel like I'm not giving you the best variety, and I'm so sorry. Anyway, I'm gonna show it to you. This one is Quartz Glow. It's got like a champagne color. And it just gives a beautiful 
glow. Oh, and I love Hourglass as well. Nothing too sparkly, still really classy, elegant, and that's it. That's a long video. This is what I would wear on the daily. I feel good, I feel polished, but not overdone. Thank you so much for staying with me this long. If you liked it, please hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave and the notification bell. I hope this helps and I will see you later. Bye.